بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على إمامنا ورسولنا محمد بن عبد الله عليه الصلاة وتم تسليم أما بعد طاعث رحمه الله تعالى ساز الكبير الثامن عشرة قذف المحسنات قال الله تعالى إن الذين يرمون المحسنات إن الذين يرمون المحصنات الغافلات المؤمنات لعنوا في الدنيا والآخرة ولهم عذاب عظيم وقال تعالى والذين يرمون المحصنات ثم لم يأتوا بأربعة شهداء فجدوهم ثمانين جلدة الآيتان وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم اجتنبوا سبع المبقات فذكر منها قذف المحصنات الغافلات المؤمنات وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم معاذ فكلتك أمك وهل يكب الناس على مناخلهم يوم القيامة إلا حصعيد ألسنتهم الذهبي رحمه الله says the 18th major sin قذف المحصنات is the slander and accusation of chaste women the slander and the accusation of chaste women Accusing a woman of adultery. Accusing, accusing a woman of fornication. And she's free from that. Something that happens often. Many people, they call women certain names. A man may become angry and may call his wife a certain name. Something from which she is free. This is prohibited. And it is from the grave, heinous sins in al Islam. The author, he says... Allah the Exalted tells us, Surah An-Nur, verse 23, إن الذين يرمون المحصنات الغافلات المؤمنات لعنوا في الدنيا والآخرة ولهم عذاب عظيم Those who accuse the unmindful and innocent believing women who are chaste and pure of fornication and adultery have been cursed in this life and in there after. And theirs is a formidable punishment. Allah the Exalted also says in the uh, very same surah, and those who accuse the chaste women and fail to bring four witnesses, فَجْلِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَ Whip them, beat them, flog them 80 times to the end of the Ayat regarding that. Hadith number 145. The Prophet ﷺ says, Avoid the seven destroyers. Avoid the seven crushers. The seven sins which will totally have a profound impact on damaging your Islam and your Iman. And from those seven, he mentioned, قَذْفَ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Accusing chaste and unmindful believing women of that crime. Hadith number 146. He says, the Prophet ﷺ also says, The Muslim is the one from whom the rest of the Muslims are free and protected from the harm of his tongue, from the annoyance of his tongue. So this goes to show us is that many sins come from a person not controlling his tongue. When a person fails to control his tongue and watch what he says, he can fall into a multitude of kabair. Hadith number 147, the author says that the Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'adh, فَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ He says, may your mother be bereaved of you. What will be the cause of people being poured down and people being dragged upon their faces and their noses on the day of judgment, except for what their tongues produce, except for what they say, of kedib, slander, backbiting, tailbearing, lying on the Prophet ﷺ, etc. The author he then says, and the law of the exalted he also tells us in Surah Al Ahzab, the 33rd chapter, verse 58. And those who annoy the believers, male and female, on unwarranted grounds, no justification for the annoyance of these believers, 
Indeed, they are committing a great sin. And these people are not people of truth. Rather, they're people of buhtan, of lies. Hadith number 148. He says, the Prophet ﷺ says, مَنْ قَذَفَ مَمْلُوكَهُ بِالزِّنَا أُقِيمَ عَلَيْهِ الْحَدُّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ كَمَا قَالَ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ He says, anyone who accuses his servant and his slave of zina, of being unchaste, and that's unjust, that's, that's incorrect, it's not true, he says that the punishment will be put on him on يوم القيامة. The had waliyadu billah. The criminal punishment for zina will be put on him on the day of judgment unless it is as he has said, unless it was true. And Dhahibi Rahimullah says this hadith is mutafakun alayhi. He then concludes the chapter by saying, Amma man qadafa um al mu'minina aishita radiyallahu anha ba'da nuzuli bara'atiya min as sama fu kafirun mukadibun lil qurani fu yuqtal. As for those who accuse the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down those, sent down those ayat, uh, explicitly declaring her innocence, then this person is a kafir. Allah sent down these ayat from the heavens, and he continues to say that she is guilty of that. And she made those crimes... Then this person is an apostate, a kafir, waliyat billah. Someone who rejects and belies the Quran, therefore he deserves to be executed. He deserves capital punishment. So let us be very careful and let us be mindful and watchful of that which comes from our mouths, of that which is produced by our tongues regarding our sisters in Islam. Regarding our mothers, our daughters, our wives. Be very careful, you actually talking about your wife. Accusing your wife. Having bad thoughts and having suspicion of your wife, of your daughter. Be very careful. This is extremely dangerous. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this horrible crime. Uh, and to keep us far from being like those who... Clearly slander our mother, radiallahu anha. We ask Allah to keep us from being their friends and their comrades and joining with them and sitting and talking and laughing with them. Those despicable foul people among their crimes is this one here. Wallahu ta'ala alam.